rather than take right. up the time with, with that introduction, please um, you. deliver your work and research and all the good things that you're doing in bringing corporates and startups together. Thanks, Yorick. So, a uh, pleasure to be here. Um, great to be involved with Henley Business Angel, one of the sort of founding members, I guess, and being involved in the first, first sort of one. What I'm going to talk about in this sort of 18 minutes is 18 years of working with large corporates in their corporate venturing innovation and really how there's opportunities for sales, partnering, investment and exit for angels and for, for the ventures and that themselves. So I'm largely going to talk about my day job, but you know, I've, your extent, I've got plenty of things that I do with the business school and things that I do, which I'll touch on as well in terms of my portfolio and sort of stuff like that. So first of all, um, I'm going to cover why corporates and why startups need to be innovating. I'm going to be talking about corporate venture capital, so the investment from corporates into startups. Uh, and I'm going to give some examples, personal examples, and ones that have been touched by Henley Business Angels, but there's lots more, but ones that are particularly pertinent. So in terms of why do organizations need to innovate, what are startups doing that's the, the innovative side of things, we're all seeing this convergence of technology, new business models, whether it's mobile apps, green devices, big data, new materials is going and creating new paradigms in areas and some of the ventures we're going to see tonight and that are, are really cre creating those things. But current corporates and current uh, industries are really got legacy and their business models aren't going to be taking advantage of the technology. So taking an example of the uh, energy sort of space, I like to think and work with corporates around thinking about three horizons. So what's the current business model? So in the energy space, large power stations, copper wires, there might be some incremental stuff happening, but what's the, the, the third horizon, the disruptive innovation that's coming? Distributed energy, autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, what's happening in health? And I think one of the presentations we're going to see tonight on sort of PX. Current business covering. model is looking after sick people in hospitals, Yes, we've got some devices that are trying to go out there, but what's the business model going to be for health and wellness? And I'll be giving an example about that in a moment. Uh, what's happening in the administrative spaces in terms of education, doctors, and the example we just saw in terms of the, the pharmacy, these are now happening in the pharmacies. What happens when this data is going to be in the cloud and there's Bitcoin and currencies? What are the business models going to be happening in the, out in those sort of spaces? And one of the ventures that I've invested in is in the music space. So Trident Cloud Music, what was the, what was the old model? Record studios, pressing vinyl, selling them in shops. Russell Sheffield, who's created this track music business, his father used to run Trident Music, and he was there when Queen were doing their recording of Bohemian Rhapsody in his father's music, music center. What's happening now? Of course, we've seen iTunes and we've seen Spotify. Where might it happen in the future? Collaboration, artists coming together, taking back control of their creative stuff and getting paid in that directly and, and working in those areas. So that's an interesting, that's, for me, that's an interesting area of where things are going to be disrupted. So we're seeing lots of disruption, lots of innovation. Corporates are being uh, threatened by this. So a bit of my background, I did my MBA here in the back end of the 90s. Got my worst mark in my, one of my MBA papers when I did effectively three steps of how my business, Unilever at the time, was going to do online product information, health and safety information, online order taking, and automatic tank replenishment for our industrial detergents. Couldn't get my corporate to look at Netscape and Mosaic. Got my worst mark in my paper here because I couldn't quantify the figures. But hey, guys, this is where the future is going. So I went with my pitch deck to the business school here and said, I'm going to set up a business which we called Henley Incubator to help corporates in their innovation and venturing. This was in 2000. And then the story sort of goes on from there. So I've been working with corporates around open innovation, corporate venturing and sort of stuff like that now over that time. But what's been happening? So here's some, so what are corporates doing? So this is about corporate venturing activity. So these are active corporates who are doing minority stake investments in startups by quarter from CB Insights. So in Q4 2017, 270 corporates did direct investments into startups. And the deals by year, in terms of numbers of deals, about 2,300 deals where corporates were involved, 
Corporates are involved in about a quarter of the venture capital type deals, mm -hmm. and that was in about $109 billion of investment and that globally, and you can see the mix and that of, um, of sectors. That, so we're talking about with corporate venturing. And these are the types of corporates. So Alphabet, Google, SoftBank, <coughs> Tencent, Intel. And these are in terms of the, the sorts of deals and that they're doing. So SoftBank out of Japan, so China, Tencent out of China, uh, Didi, the, um, um, the Uber equivalent in China, Alibaba out of China, and Financial, which is the, the Alibaba financial sort of area. So these are the sorts of quantities. These are the types of organizations that are venturing in that within that space. Now, in my book that I've recently published, and there's, there's some copies of it down when you go back for drinks and that after, I outline what's the purpose, what's the innovation ambition of the corporates? Are they trying to do Horizon 3 type stuff or are they trying to do stuff within their current business? And what are the different types of processes they're using? So the stats I've just given you are all about just that bit, the direct investment part. Corporates are also investing in funds and you don't see them in those stats. And they're also doing university collaborations, partner collaboration, creating incubators, doing M&A. So in terms of the opportunity for startups and the opportunity for angel funds, working with corporates across that spectrum is really important. These are just some of the examples of about 100 interviews I've done with corporates to talk about why they're doing investing, how they do their investing. So you know, across all industries, in the sort of examples we're, we're talking about. So I'm happy to talk in more detail about any of those that might be of interest to the ones who are pitching tonight or the, you, you who are angel investors where you're wanting to see and get validation from the corporates. So here are some examples of ones that I've been working with and are related to, to Henley Business Angels. So Herbology, I was working with PepsiCo helping set up their greenhouse which was an, a, a virtual incubator to help startups to do, uh, to do venturing. I got in touch with Yorick and the team and sort of said, hey, have you got any in the food nutrition space, which is where they were interesting. Herbology were recommended. Yorick and Chimera and some others came along to the, to the dinner we were doing with, the, with the, the PepsiCo team, just to show them some real startups and some real angels. And Herbology was one of the ones that went into about 150 of the ventures that were, were being pitched, they won a place of being one of the eight and got 25,000 euros in their back pocket and six months of coaching to help productize and snack, turn their products and that into, into snacks. Then the eight ventures which went through the process then had a judging process, which I wasn't involved with. PepsiCo did that with their external advisors and they won and they got another 100,000 euros. So that money that I talked about before, the $109 billion in sort of where the corporates have been involved in the deals, that's not included in that. This is all other stuff where corporates are helping validate the technology, help the startups, and giving the money which doesn't dilute us as investors. So I'm, I'm helping and working with these guys now. I had lunch with them on that last week. Um, and you know, there, there's opportunities for follow-on finance or for them getting, getting finance from that here. They'll be back. So they'll be back. So that's an interesting one to watch. So there's an example of that, of that. Now, I'm an investor in Chimera. I was running a program at Williams Formula One, bringing some corporates together to explain to them how they should do their venturing, and I got Tim along to, to come and speak at that. From that, there was one of the major retailers there who said, oh, I think this is really interesting. I should put you in touch with my buyers. Now, unfortunately, or what typically happens with these startups who are doing things in Horizon 3 and, and Horizon 2 and Horizon 3, doesn't fit within our current product portfolio, can't get it through the buyer and sort of stuff like that. So I think one of the lessons is if you're selling bulk standard stuff, which is going to be competing against the others, then you're going through the buyers. If you're trying to do innovative stuff, then you need to be working with the people who are doing the innovation or doing the investing. So knowing where to pitch your business and your product in a corporate is so important. Another couple of examples that I've been involved with, so Professor Scrubbington, one of the ones that, that, pitched. Um, that pitched here, had a, uh, had a meeting with the, the, with the two founders, thought they were great entrepreneurs, ladies who were running that. I took them along to meet Unilever Ventures. 
great bit of insight from there was they were talking about their product going on the shelves and that within retailers. Unilever said, your valuation would be five times higher if you're selling direct and you've got subscriptions of the type model. Unilever acquired Dollar Shaving Club for a billion dollars selling bloody razor blades and men's personal products online. Right? So the pitching the product. Great. Pardon? The video was great. Yeah, no, that's right. So, so, you know, in terms of how Henley Business Angels can help, is putting them in touch with some of those, helping to validate the technology, helping to validate the market, and maybe get some money. A little bit brilliant. I had to chat with those guys about their direct selling. And Cup Club, in the moment, what myself and one of the other angels is in discussion about potentially investing in that with them and understanding their model and that as well. So there's things there that across that spectrum of different things that corporates are doing where startups and angels and that, that can help and where corporates can help validate and things like that. Now another perspective I've got on this stuff and some of you who follow me on LinkedIn will see that a couple of weeks ago I was in China again. I've been back and forth to China for about 14 years, been working with corporates there for the last 10 years. What's the impact of China in terms of what we're doing in terms of startups, technology and corporates? So a few quick perspectives I've got from that. Trying to sell into China, very difficult or can be difficult in terms of entering the market, language, culture, and their domination, and just trying to do stuff across the internet. As I'm finding again, you know, YouTube doesn't work, Facebook doesn't work, they've got a different ecosystem and that there. So what I term the Great Wall of China, if you're trying to do stuff in China. Uh, this image is to illustrate what I was terming the New Silk Road, and this cartoon I got made probably about seven or eight years ago. Now what Xi Ping is doing with his One Belt, One Road, the New Silk Road in building the infrastructure coming out of China is massive and different. The illustration this was about is China has moved from cheap plastic toys, cheap consumer goods, to now high-end electronics. So in my book, I give an example of wind turbines, you know, where drones are being made, where medical devices are being made. They have now got one of the co corporate clients I'm working with in the consumer space, 90 over 95% of the manufacturing for the new devices that are, that are disrupting their industry, manufacturing in China, and 80% of the patents are Chinese patents in the space that they're working in that on. So, so in terms of products and stuff coming from China is important. And what I term enter the dragon, are we going to see Chinese corporates coming out? So Huawei and telecoms, high-speed train, 25,000 kilometers of high-speed trains in China now. They've got two-thirds of the world's capacity, and they're going to put, add another 10,000 kilometers to that within the next sort of 10, 10 to 15 years. Solar panels, one of the corporates I was working with, they were heavily invested in solar panels. Back about 10 years ago, their business was wiped out because of the Chinese sort of operation. Pharmaceuticals and health. So this is Enter the Dragon, but I put this slide up, and it gives, sort of causes concerns in this country. When I put it up in China, they all started laughing because, of course, that's a, a lion. That's a dragon <laughs> from the lion dance. So despite me going back and forth and them in Chinese lessons, I culturally got it wrong in terms of the, in terms of the, t the talk and that, that there. So China, I think, is a really a place now we should be watching and we should be copying and we should be validating our business models and that against. Because some of the corporates I'm working with, they're not doing health developments in the US or in the UK or in Europe. They're doing it in China because there's scale, there's government support and these things and that will scale up on a rapid scale and that there. So that's a perspective on China. Right, a key part in my, in my book is what I term innovative new value chain. So corporates, there's lots of corporates doing their venturing in that now, but how is that model gonna change and how do our startups and our investments fit into this? What I term this now is new value chain. So we've got stacks of technology, there's lots of technology around. Thames Valley, Silicon, you know, Silicon Roundabout, Paris, Shanghai, diabetes apps, cardiac apps, all the stuff you're going to see tonight is all around. So there's stacks of devices, there's lots of stuff going into data, but how is that business model going to change? And we need to think globally. So what I believe now is we need to be thinking about these innovative new value chains. How do we connect different technologies and different startups to create a new value proposition in health, in automotive and stuff like that? Because us Having a startup that we as angels or VCs invested in Thames Valley is not going to survive against some of those competitors or some of the parts of the world. So what are we going to be good at? What are these startups going to be good at? And how can we join up? 
So here's some examples. So automotive, so I was in China, I've just posted a video on LinkedIn around what's happening with Neo, what's happening with Tesla and that within there. But oil companies and car companies now, it's not going to be a metal box with rubber tires. This has got artificial intelligence, it's got autonomous vehicles, it's going to be car sharing, we're not going to own cars, we're going to car share in a particular environment. Here's an example which I use, which I use in my book, which is uh, Bill Taranto from Merck. So the, they're, they're an example of doing direct investments. They, look, they looked at, said, well, okay, if you caricature Merck as a company producing tablets or big hospital machines, what's going to happen when health monitoring goes into the community and we're dealing with patients as we were seeing in the pharmacy or some of the devices that here tonight. So they invested in a few cardiac devices, secure data going into the cloud and caring for the patient in the home. They invested in, in a number of those businesses. They then brought three of the businesses together as a private equity deal. And those startups and those funds working together to say, look, one plus one plus one is going to be worth five rather than us trying to get the best exit for just our own little thing. So they brought them together. They then also recognized that this new cardiac health monitoring business was not going to be fit securely within Merck. So they sold half of the business for $500 million. So they had created a billion dollar entity by doing minority stakes and bringing together those sort of three. Now they've done it in cardiac. Merck's focus areas are oncology and diabetes. Well, once you can monitor somebody's heart and you've got that process right, we'll do it in other therapies. And similarly, Castrol and BP invested in Zuby, an in-car sort of monitoring, repair power for finding trusted garages, um, looking at the, the work capacities and that within a, uh, within a garage. So how do you do those investments? How do you collaborate? The corporate is helping them expand into Asia and it's helping them to collaborate across that sort of value chain. So I think the lesson for us as you know, investors is where are the corporates that can help validate your model and where can, they, where can you get investment and where can you collaborate and work with them. So that's in terms of the corporate innovation. That's in terms of the, the thing. In terms of me personally, my portfolio includes uh, a special materials business, Chimera, the music uh, app that I sort of talked, that I briefly talked about, um, a, a business which is in um, uh, sort of photo sort of collages. I've invested in the fund in Oxford Technology. I've done some startups myself. Um, a bit of customer insight. This is one of my weekend sort of things. Flying to Ireland with my wife. We've got a house over there. A few years back, getting harassed by Ryanair because you've got an extra bag as a lady or you've got a camera bag. That would be £40 extra, please, sir and madam. I thought, how the hell can I get around that? So I designed a jacket which has got big pockets in it. <laughs> right? So it can carry, it can carry 40 litres and 10 kilos of, of stuff. I, I found, I did a crappy minimum viable product, took a couple of friends, paid for their flight and a few beers in Dublin. We went over there, found somebody from London College of Fashion to design a better one, found some suppliers on Alibaba and visited some factories in China to get small, small quantities. We launched that. Um, it's dormant and that at the moment because the two, two guys that I found it with, one is retired and is, is a bit ill on that at the moment, but it's dormant and we could re resurrect it. But I've got examples and products and that down there. But we turned over about £200,000. We, we had a full page in the Sun. We had a half a page in the Telegraph. We were on the BBC News and it was great when we were sticking two fees up to Michael O'Leary. The, 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 the other venture which I'm running at the moment, which we've got SEIS assurance and that for, is upstarts for startups. So I've got two daughters, now 11 and 15, getting them to do things on a Sunday, doing little ventures for charity. My, my daughter, who was eight at the time, was into baking, so she created a YouTube channel. It's got about 30 or 40 videos now on the YouTube channel. And I talk about this stuff when I'm running these programs with the corporates. And a number of the co people at the corporates said, God, I wish my daughters would do that. And I'd be thinking, I think, God, I wish you would do something like this. <laughs> right? so, so we created a business called Upstarts for Startups. So we, we now run programs, typically on a Saturday morning, from 10 o'clock till about 3 o'clock. The children bring their adults into their work offices. We've done it in GE in Menlo Park in Silicon Valley. Talk about selling sand to the Arabs. Teaching Silicon Valley to do, to do uh, venturing. We've done it in Shanghai with, in Chinese with 30 children plus their adults. 
and we're now going through the process of getting corporates to sort of buy into it. We've got a few of them. We said, oh, yeah, it'll be in our next budget, and this is great for our responsibility, corporate sorry, responsibilities and getting engaging. So we're running that venture at the moment. So that's my weekend sort of type thing. Um, I'm supporting some ventures out of China, a student to alumni lending platform, a drone racing business. That one, Sky Ventures, have just invested a million pounds in the drone racing league because they want new content. These guys are doing stuff there with Lola, which is a biodegradable um, sanitary towel for women, which they're selling direct. Uh, interesting venture out of Imperial College. I've been helping them with their stuff and reintroducing them to some corporates to get the materials. And that, my insight for that was really impacted by we support World Vision and sponsor children. I went with my daughter to um, Zambia in October and just seeing the issue girls have in going to school because they haven't got sanitary products. And then what do you do with these 10,000 products that each woman uses in their lifetime when they're not biodegradable? Never mind about coffee cups. So, so that's the crossover there, doing stuff with Cassisi Children Home and Hope for China. So that's a bit of my overlap. If you want more content, there's about 100 podcast interviews I've done with these corporates. If you're interested in understanding how one of these corporates, where they're interested, there's plenty of content there. And the upstarts for startups, I've got a banner and information down with the, the coffee in that later. And my book is down there. I'd be happy if you buy it on Amazon because then you can give it a five-star very uh, uh, validated one. But I've got some copies downstairs. If you'd like to buy one or donate some money to charity, I'll happily. Thank you very much.